celebrate the launch of the Planet Coaster Vintage Pack DLC, we are giving away a copy to one lucky member of the Pause Games community. So to be in with a chance of winning, head over now to vintage.pausegames.co.uk and you have up to five methods of entry per person and you have two weeks to get your entries in. So head over there now and good luck. Hello guys, welcome back to Pause and welcome back to Hysteria Pier. This is our promenade and pier build using the brand new Planet Coaster Vintage Pack that was released a couple of days ago. So this is episode number three and this is the build. So in today's episode we are, uh, we've got a time lapse with some lovely commentary from myself to explain what craziness I am building today. So I'll get into all that in a few seconds but first of all um, if you enjoy this kind of content don't forget to give us a like down below and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of this kind of uh, content on Planet Coaster, Park Tech and that kind of general simulation game stuff. So please subscribe if you are into that kind of thing. Um, and don't forget to get your suggestions in on the comments below to any of these videos if you've got any ideas. If you see me doing something and you think, ah, that's a bit rubbish, you could do it better some other way, let me know. I'm open to suggestions. I've never built this kind of style before, so um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. So on to today's video. So we actually get started on the pier. Woo, yay! I know it's been two episodes and we haven't done anything really with the pier except put out a bit of path. Um, so yeah, we uh, make the entrance to the pier towards the end of this video. Um, it took me ages to come up with an idea what I, I was happy with um, using a lot of the new pieces. Um, but I think it's turned out quite nice. Um, I've got the sign on there, some lighting, uh, and just generally the entrance is pretty much done by the end of this video. Now, first of all, what you are seeing here, and for the next sort of, I don't know, five, ten minutes, um, you've just seen some last little bits um, and changes to the promenade that we've started in the last couple of episodes. So the first things I'm doing here um, is adding some actual usable hotels to the promenade. Um, there's three that I've added up this section. Um, this one, Hysteria Hotel, being the sort of, I don't know, four star if you were in real life. Um, the other two are sort of like a bit more janky, a bit more run down, and the price reflects the standard of the hotel. So there's three separate hotels along this promenade strip um, that are usable in the game. So once we get guests in here, they can use them. So it adds that kind of element of realism there as well. Um, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, this is the first time I have ever used hotels in Planet Coaster since they were added in whatever update with, um, what was it, 1.6 with um, the Studios pack. Um, I've never used them. So, yeah, they work all right. I mean, they're, they're what they are. It's a box that people go into. I mean, they, they weren't implemented the best, let's be honest. Uh, but they're there. We've used them. We might as well. It's a feature that's in the game, uh, so we might as well use it. Um, the other thing I'm putting in just here is a little information booth. Um, I had a bit of empty space, and I thought, what would a tourist attraction a promenade have on it? You might have an information booth. Um, so think of this in a real-life situation as a place that's going to give out maps of the local area they might sell tickets to local attractions that sort of thing rather than it being a specific theme park information booth it's like a tourist information and you get them around these sort of places so i thought i'll stick one in here for a relatively small build but that's generally how these things are is a very little building um, with one little person sat in there uh, and away you go so i've used a few of the new pieces well a, a few i mean i've used the trim which is uh, one of the new pieces from Vintage, um, just because I think it looks quite nice. Um, it's not the most attractive looking information booth in the world, but they're not. It's just a thing that's there, it's a box, it, it serves its purpose, so that's what I've done. Um, over this sort of side, um, it was a bit lacking. I didn't really put any effort into this side of the promenade, so I've kind of just put a few things in to cap it off on the seafront side. Um, I stick in a random store, which I still need to come back to and, uh, and sort of change that up a little bit and add a few bits to it. Um, but generally I just wanted a couple of buildings up here to just give 
a reason a reason for actual guessing the game to come up this way and uh, b two can't whatever i said um, i wanted there to be just something on this side of the road so what i end up doing here is actually creating another um off pier attraction that makes up part of this promenade so as i was explaining in the last episode there is a museum of wonder which is a kind of like ripley's believe it or not mystery kind of walkthrough attraction we've got a fire adventure which is like a become a fireman for the day sort of thing um what else did i add down there there's some arcades um i put in a ferris wheel towards the end of the last episode and what i'm building here is a kind of horror walkthrough so think of it as like a haunted house a haunted manor a ghost train kind of walkthrough attraction um, and again, you do get these sort of things in these areas. I mean, I know for a fact Blackpool has a walkthrough horror attraction on the promenade. Um, I know that there are quite a few around uh, Old Town in... Um, uh, no, not Anaheim, where am I talking? Old Town in um, Orlando, Florida. Um, and that's not really a seaside town, but it's very similar. But that has one. Um, there was somewhere I went quite recently last year. Again, a little seaside town, and that had a random little horror walkthrough. Um, so these things do exist, and I just thought I'd put something in here. Again, it adds some a, an element of realism to the build. Um, not that we have a haunted house that I can put in there. Um, I think I just end up putting a shop in there in the end. I was trying to see if I could actually fit a ride in. Uh, that's what I was just looking at there. If any any sort of ride footprint would fit in that kind of space, uh, and it, it doesn't really. Everything's massive in this game, as we all know. Um, so I've just gone with a shop for now. Um, but and, and it, I like the horror theme, so I, it kind of just um, lends itself to doing something horror related, which is what we've done here. So little horror house, walk for attraction, open nine to five every day. Come on by. Well, whatever. Um, so that's just another little attraction we've put um, on the promenade. I do a little bit more work here with the pathways to give this car park uh, um, a sort of path link up to the actual prom itself. Uh, as it didn't really have one before, it was kind of just sat there to one side, um, just road access. Um, so I, I've duplicated one of these um, arcades that I made the bottom end of the prom. And I've put this up here as well. So at least there's three separate things that guests will come up this way for. They've all got shops in them, they've all got arcade machines in them, or some kind of something for them to actually come up here. So, fingers crossed, when we get some guests in, um, they'll use this area. Now, what I think I'm going to do in the next episode is jump out of the scenario editor, because I'm still building all this in that at the moment. Um, the main reason for that is I still haven't decided where my boundary for the park is going to finish yet. So I've kind of made it as big as possible and I've just started building in the scenario editor. And everything's going to be editable anyway, so it doesn't really make any odds. Um, but I think in the next episode we will come out of scenario editor, get this park actually properly being built in a real park mode, uh, in a sandbox mode. And maybe open it and get some guests in just to see how they, they walk around. Now the thing that obviously dawned on me um, as I was recording this footage is they're obviously going to use the road and walk up and down the road, which is not ideal to be honest. Um, so what I might do, and I've kind of been putting it off, I might have to end up putting a load of the barriers along the entire crossing sections to stop guests walking up and down the road. It's going to be a pain, let's be honest, it's going to be an absolute pain. but. We'll see. We'll see how bad it looks when guests come. But ideally, I do want that. I do want them to use the sidewalks and the crossings um, as if it was real. So I don't know. That's something I might. And I'll, I'll do that off camera if I'm going to do it because it's going to be tedious to watch and tedious to do. Um, but I, I do like the idea of it being realistic. So I think that's something we will do down the line. Okay, now on to the main event of this episode. Uh, we get started with the entrance to the pier. So, yes, we are three episodes in and we are sort of, what, eight minutes into this video. Um, and so far we've done nothing with a pier. And this series is called Hysteria Pier. I know, I get it. Stop your moaning. We're finally starting to build it. So, um, I've a little bit of inspiration from, well... Let me explain what I'm doing here. So originally, and I mentioned in the last episode, I was I wanted to make, I wanted to take inspiration from the piers at Blackpool as they are something that I, I visit quite often, um, and I've grown up going to Blackpool pretty much once a year. And then I started looking at some pictures of them, and they're pretty boring. 
to be honest. I mean, the yeah, the pretty naff. Even when they were like in the heyday, they were pretty much looked like a conservatory. So originally, I was trying to recreate that. I mean, the, in terms of its structure, you'll see when I get there in a second. I do add this little second platform with some glass windows in, um, which is in homage to the reference images that I was looking at, um, which did kind of, like I say, look like a white boy in conservatory. So I've took some inspiration from the reference Im images that I was looking at, uh, but I've also just sort of taken, uh, utilising the pieces that are in this pack and going mental with them, really, and just seeing what happens. Um, so it's a bit of a half-referenced, half kind of made-up um, entrance this pier um, but I think it works out quite well I mean I was trying to uh, play around with a few bits I've never built anything like this before um, I've sort of got no experience in this sort of build so you'll see a lot of deleting and coming back and forth and a lot of moving around so apologies if the camera's all over the place at least when I was trying to do this roof because it was causing me problems uh, but I wanted to do it as custom as possible rather than just using like um, uh, the normal uh, grid pieces so it, it took me a while but we got there in the end um, yeah, so a lot of this is um, trying to just come up with on the fly, to be honest, which is not normally how I like to build things. I like to research them and have at least a plan in mind before I go ahead with it. Oh, pardon me. Oh, dear me. Sorry, yawning. I've been a lot of, uh, a lot of plank coaster the last couple of days. Um, so, yeah, this little bit I'm building here, like I said, is it, kind of in homage to the reference images that I was looking at. Uh, I don't actually know where, the, where it is, the pier that was on the picture. Uh, it looked British, um, so it was good enough for me, and it looked sort of jank enough. Um, but as I mentioned previously, this, the main entrance bit of a pier is generally the part of it that they keep looking nice. It's the only bit of it that they really would put any money into, uh, and, and at least try and make it look nicely presentable. So this is going to be the, the grand entrance to the pier. Now remember, this... In, in the sort of storyline of this build this pier is owned and operated by the same uh, group and the same company that operates Hysteria Valley the theme park next door now this pier is not going to take in as much, hardly any revenue compared to the theme park I mean what are they going to take in uh, the um, ride revenue arcade kind of money so that it's not going to make hardly anything so they're not going to put much money back into it so this main entrance way in my plan is going to be the grand entrance then as you sort of get down the pier it's going to look a little bit more drab and it's going to get more and more crap toward the end and everything's just going to be a little bit naff a little bit run down this thing's not going to be working certainly it might be broken there might be some rides that are completely abandoned and, and sort of not used anymore uh, and that sort of thing uh, and in the subject of rides actually um, I think there's definitely going to be at least one coaster on the pier um, now, in terms of realistic British piers, I can't think of any that have got a wooden coaster on them. Um, I know one of the Blackpool ones has a relatively small um, steel coaster. Uh, some have got like uh, log flumes and things on them. However, I don't think... Uh, I think a wooden coaster lends itself better to a pier. So I'm going to make a bold decision and I'm going for a wooden coaster in this in this build uh, obviously I don't start that yet that'll be something down the line um, but I am going to put a wooden coaster or at least attempt to put a wooden coaster on this pier uh, I'm not very good at doing coasters um, so even though it's gonna be quite tricky to fit one in I'm gonna give it a go and hopefully it will work out all right uh, but we'll find out in a few episodes time and um, so here we'll, I'll just test in to see how the sign fit um, and luckily it fits quite nice up here um, I do go back and change the colors uh, in a little in a little while it doesn't remain pink I go for a kind of red color to so make it looks it makes it pop nicely it's really good um, it all looked a little bit squashed with these sort of towers I put either side so I do eventually move all this uh, this out to give it a little bit more space um, so we'll, towards the end you'll see that it doesn't look as cramped up as it sort of does here um, and we put in some um, sort of wooden flooring down as well to give the impression that the um, the wood support of the pier leads all the way to the the front of it really. So you'll see that in a second. I put all that in. 
uh, and also putting um, just a little bit of realism here into the sign as well. Um, I'm just using some of these metal pipes or metal cables, whatever they're called in the game, just to go through. It's a really subtle thing, but I just wanted to um, link them all together in a kind of realistic way. So then at the back, I put a few little random supports. So the whole thing is supported in real life. It's just a little thing. It took me about 10 minutes, but I, I like there to be at least some realism in these kind of builds um, especially in the theme park stuff I, mean, I don't like stuff be just floating around you wouldn't get it in real life so why do it in the game I know we can, I know it's all about fantasy but I don't know, I like realism so that's all I'm doing here if you're wondering what the pipes are for so the sign's in, it looks really nice in the in the dark, they've done such a good job on that font um, I wish there was more <laughs> I genuinely wish there was um, if they'd put a whole sort of font set in of various different signage um, maybe they'll add some more down the line but I, I would love just a section of scenery of lettering and signage of all different sides and colours and shapes and things it would be really good uh, it makes signs so much easier or just give us some new fonts please I want some new fonts because um, they just look crap on the signs but anyway let's not moan about it so I'm just checking how it looks in the dark and it looks pretty nice the lights on the building look really good already but obviously things like that can be improved so I do put in some of my own lighting um, which is kind of how we sort of end this video is doing some kind of like fairy lights just picking out some details um, I, here I try a bit of um, the new fencing which I think again this one lends itself quite nicely um, so this kind of is it eventually it becomes like a boardwalk entrance so um, the floor around the wooden path is also uh, also becomes like a, a wooden board as I've just mentioned the, the idea behind that is the foundation of the pier goes stretches all the way back to the road um, and then they've just sort of put this fence either side of it to funnel people in which is what which is what I've kind of gone for here um, but it's a really good little fence, I, I really like it. The, they've added some really nice bits to this. Uh, and again, this this second fence that I've put in here, the one without the shapes on it, the, the sort of see-through metal one, this one, changing the colour on that, and that can be used all over the place in normal theme parks, like around a pond, just generally like in a nice sort of generic area. That'll lend itself really nicely to just any kind of fence area <laughs> I mean the, and that's the good thing about a lot of this um, vintage stuff like the, the benches and things they've put in they've made them very generic uh, and that's something they started to do seem to start to do with the studios pack is they've obviously listened to the players and everyone's everyone has been screaming out for um, generic items for a long while um, and they've listened and that's what they've done and um, so here is that little foundation that I've put in um, I'm gonna make it look a little bit better at the moment it's kind of sits straight on the ground so we will change a few bits with the ground up uh, and that's something we'll do next time um, as I haven't started anything underneath the pier yet so in terms of the supports um, and the actual framework I haven't done any of that yet so that's something we'll do next time uh, or even off camera it depends how tedious it's gonna become I don't want to put out a 20 minute video of just putting in some bloody supports on a pier because that'll just be boring for you guys. So I'll have a play around off camera and I'll see how long it's going to take me. <laughs> but that's something I will do um, probably, like I say, next time as now we're getting into the pier itself. So here I was just putting in a few little lights to um, just make the, the, the entrance look a little bit better. Um, I've gone for a white and orange sort of animated sequence light. Um, which you will see when uh, in the experience video, which will be out just after this one. Um, which uh, it, it works quite well actually. It kind of fits with the sign. I want to keep it the kind of orange light, as as it's very, it's a very much a sort of seventies orange bulb, like that dirty orange that you get. Um, and I imagine in my head, this sort of entrance was last done up in like the seventies and eighties. And it's not really been touched since. Um, just maybe added a bit of paint, maybe replaced some of the lights with LED, but the signage and generally most of the stuff on there is still going to be the, the tacky kind of old halogen bulbs. So that's why I've kept it this kind of orange and white colour. So again, I added a little bit of realism and just, just to put a bit of storyline out there, which 
I know it means nothing to most people, but I, some people might be interested in that. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting these little things around the columns, um, as it looks quite nice around there. And generally, this is just a nice view of what it looks like. So that's about it for today's video, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give us a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with all this kind of content. And if you've got any questions, queries, comments, or suggestions, drop those down below. There'll be the experience video coming out just after this one, so do check that out. And I'll see you again in the next one from Hysteria Pier. Bye, guys.